Hello, sir. How are you? Round two. Doing right. well. Yeah. <laughs> It is definitely round two. Uh, welcome back to those of you who are joining us. We're on the Get Lit Podcast, a podcast brought to you by Southern Lighting Solutions. My name is McHugh David. I am co-founder along with my fellow co-founder, Tarek Alimadine. How are you, sir? Doing well. Again. 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 Is your mic on? Yes. Thank you. The mics are on this time. Uh, of course, a, a running gag on this side of the mic. We have moved. Obviously, we're at the kitty table we're now. At the like, kitty table now, yep. And we, we, it does look like we have your microphone situation figured out. Uh, the first time we went through, uh, since we switched locations, or not really locations, but switched venues and that kind of thing, we had to uh, figure out some things with our microphones. And it looks like we've got that settled. Unfortunately, when Mr. Tarek over here started talking, no one could hear him. And nobody's here to hear me. They're here to hear you. So today, we are talking about strip light. And of course, most people in America know that as what looks like a piece of tape with chips on it, which is kind of what it is, as you explained it first time. I'm going to let you explain it that way again. But there's so much more to it. Uh, and we've talked about residential, commercial, and industrial uh, type lighting leading up to this. And the amazing thing about strip is in residential and commercial, it's more than just tape light you put somewhere. We have fixtures and things that work with it. So go ahead, give us the the 30-second description of what strip oh, light is. Oh, I think you described it very well already. It's Think of a piece of scotch tape, bendable, which has LED chips on it and emits light. Right. And so, you know, it, it's interesting because a lot of people in America use it for a, a, a lot of different, uh, right now, a lot of different things that are kind of, uh, might make people in other parts of the world kind of go nuts because it's just like, here's a big piece of strip tape and they just, you know, kids just line it across the wall or they just stick it up underneath a cabinet. And there's so much more you can do with it. But first, and we are going to, we do have a workbench to go with this. We recommend you check it out. It's going to give you two to three minutes of an overview of sure. Strip and, and you'll actually be able to see it. There'll be a link in the comments. But uh, Strip, like anything else, needs a driver. Yep. 12, five, five, 24 volts. Usually it's 12 and 24 volts Okay. Uh, that you would use for the Strip. 5 volt is when you get into the more architectural, addressable, uh, color tuning type. Right. And we'll, strip. we'll talk about that later in the show, but want to discuss first and foremost, um, the, you know, the residential uses of strip. And of course, we're going to, we're going to talk about the base level strip first, but want to get into the fixtures as well, because those are really cool. But first, uh, you know, let's talk about some of the things you can do with strip, you know, under cabinet lighting comes to mind as a place to start. Sure. I mean, under cabinet lighting, uh, joinery lighting, um, you have options where, you know, if, if you just want to open up a drawer and have it, have it light up for you, you know, you can use it with a sensor or you can use it with a switch. Um, it can be recessed into the wall. It can be recessed into the wood. It can be surface mounted. It can be hidden in a more architectural curved way. I mean, it, it can be exposed. It can be hidden. It, there's really no limit to what you can and cannot do with with uh, with strip and with with profiles. It's your imagination is basically the limit. Right. So you could. I mean, you could do anything. From... I mean, we have well, we ahead. have hundreds of profiles that we have access to. Hundreds. Sure. Now, when you say profile. Uh, uh, give me a give me a give me a definition. Well, of that. it's what an is... aluminum channel. It's an aluminum profile that, um, it could be just a like like we said a simple profile which is mounted on a surface. It could be a simple profile which is recessed, or it could be an architectural profile which let's say um, mounts up against the wall and is durable enough to slip a piece of glass into it. If you light it behind, now that glass is completely lit. Right. So it's like, you know, those those very nice, you know, lighting solutions you see in high-end kitchens or you see um, in retail stores where the actual glass itself is lit. All it is is a strip and a channel and a specialized profile with a piece of glass and turned on. And so, you know, a, a lot of applications putting that strip behind things so that it, it'll, it'll shine through, whether that is a, a, a profile or if it's the... I mean, I, yeah, you have, you have, so in certain cases, most profiles, they have diffusers, mm -hmm. clear, opal, frosted uh, diffusers. And other times, you don't even need that. You just put strip behind a certain kind of marble, onyx marble, which is a yellowish marble. 
and it brings out a beautiful hue. Right. That you see right there. Or you see strip behind, you know, your comedy advertising where they used to use uh, fluorescent tubes. Now it's strip, strip, strip profiles. Right. And so uh, real quick on that one, when you're thinking about some, some sort of screen, you were talking about or uh, addressable. Yes. Strip. So uh, give us sort of, a, a again, a 30-second definition of what addressable means. Addressable means, so let's say you have a one-foot piece of strip, okay? And that one-foot piece of strip has 10 different chips on it, has mm -hmm. 10 chips on it, okay? Addressable means with the right control software and the right control hardware, every single LED chip can be controlled individually, which means on that one foot strip, you can have it be red, green, blue, yellow, orange, fluorescent, I mean, all the way through. Each one is completely independent. Right. And so what that allows you to do, which you might see in nightclubs, is where light can be racing back and forth, you know, uh, throughout fixtures. Mm -hmm. um, they can pulse with the music. They can change colors with the beat. They can change. They move forward. They move backward. You know, uh, they just they just pulse. I mean, that's all addressable, RGB. Right, and and that's more of a commercial use, and and we can get into that. It's commercial but use, but I mean, we've we've had clients who have too much money on their hands, and you know, they want to do something crazy, and just. You know, they create themselves a little disco room. Sure. And you just line it up with addressable RGB strip and watch the party happen. Sure. And and one of the things that I, I do want to bring up before we move to commercial is, and you'll see it in the workbench, is the profile that, that works with um, uh, not molding necessarily, but but it, it sits flush against the wall. Sure. You, it can be set flush against all, or it can be trimless. You have right. trimless profiles. Uh, yeah, it's almost like room trim. Sure. Or wall trim. And, correct. And, and you can paint it, correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, a profile can be painted whatever color you want. So I kind of want to paint a picture for those of you who might be listening, because when we're talking about something like that, we're talking about the ability to sort of hide your light in a way to where it's not necessarily a fixture. So, you know, a lot of people like fixtures in their home to sort of dress it up. But if you're looking at a room where, let's say you have a rambunctious kid or something like that, you might, or, you know, you have a lot of animals, you know, whatever it might be, you might be able to incorporate strip light into the trim in the room. So you're lighting up the room, but it's a little more durable. It's a little harder to break and you can paint over it. Sure. Those are, those are all options. So, well, you can't paint over the diffuser. No, but you can paint you, the profile, right? The yes. profile sits flush. It's almost like wood trim. And you paint over those sides. You can putty over them. And yep. you've got the diffuser in the middle. Yes, you cannot paint over the diffuser. <laughs> Light's still got to be able to come out. But you can paint over the rest of it so it looks like the trim in your room. Correct. So it's an, it's an interesting piece. And of course... You know, the most common residential function with, with strip in this case is just using it in coves. Right. You know, at the top of a room. Um... To give like, you know, you know, have you ever seen those things in hotels? Yes, yes, yes. Where it's all recessed in the crown structure mm -hmm. up top in the ceiling. Right. That's where you would use strip light. And a high enough output strip light is going to light up your entire room. Right. Right. And, it, you know, it, it, it has an interesting, I guess you can say, set of, uh, uh, it's very utility, very yes. versatile. Yes. So getting into... Commercial. There's obviously the trim piece that we talked about already, but there are I'm linears just, and you know things, all sorts of things. Sure. I mean, you have you have linear profiles. You have step profiles. You know, if you've ever noticed in a cinema, the the uh, steps that you you step on and they're lit underneath. That's all. Uh, that's all for the most part. Strip light. Uh, that is down there. Um, you have strip that fits with certain profiles into into handrails. So when you're walking, the entire handrail itself is illuminated, whether it's on a staircase, it's outdoors. You have strip that goes inside a pool. You have a strip that goes in marine applications. You know, it could be in an aquarium tank. It could be along the coast, in the ground, I mean, in the wall. Again, hundreds of profiles are available. And, you know, they're all, they all have their own use, you know, and, and, so when you're talking about thinking about a sort of modern office space, 
especially front office space. You see a lot of what looks like high end fixtures, you know, especially these pen not pendants, but linears hanging down from the ceiling and stuff like that. You'd be surprised how affordable they are, but also how efficient they are and effective. Right. I mean, linears tend to use, they don't use strip as much as they used to. They use more linear boards. However, um, your typical aluminum profile, so your half inch aluminum profile with the LED strip, you can use a suspension cable and now it becomes a suspended, you know, linear fixture. Sure. And that uses strip lights. Sure. So a lot of different applications for strip light. Uh, a couple of projects we have locally that we're trying to figure some things out. Uh, you did have one project uh, wherein you ended up using some linear fixtures to try to help them out, but it was mostly strip-based, was it not? Correct. Yeah, so walk us through, you know, that was a, a hotel hallway. Correct. Right? So walk us through that a, a little bit, because, you know, there are a lot of people who usually when they think about hotel hallways, especially in a, a lower tier or mid tier hotel, they think dark, trying to get back to their room quickly. And, you know, a lot of hotels are trying to up that atmosphere a little bit. Yes. So, I mean, hotels, they follow different parameters, different standards all around the world. Sure. You know, and, and hallways, especially where rooms are concerned, are not supposed to be super lit. They're supposed to have a more dim type function, is oh, okay. what you know uh, is is the the typical you know uh, typical feature. And again, it varies from hotel to hotel. You know, one one Hilton can be you know a certain way, another Hilton could be another way. It just depends on is it a three star, four star, five star hotel. I mean, they again they have their guidelines, they have their parameters. Um, it's something that's really being studied, what the end users of those specific type of hotels like. You know, it's, it's designed around that. But going back to the, the, the strip, the strip affords you the ability to hide the lighting and throw the lighting in certain ways where, you know, you get, you get the, the, the outputs that you need, the en enough light that you need uh, within within certain areas, and referring back to the project that you talked about, this was a a project down the corridors where they were using a full full uh, fixture, mm -hmm. and um, we switched it up to LED strip with the right profile, and instead of paying a hundred dollars a foot, now they're paying twenty five dollars a foot, right, and getting just as much light as they need. Right. And that's the interesting thing as well, is that strip itself functions like a fixture. You know? It is a fixture. It, it, it's a fixture in and of itself. A lot of people, you know, we don't, we don't see that here in a minute because they hadn't quite made it here. Well, no. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to understand, you can have the light source by itself, but, you know, uh, not to be obtuse about it, but the moment you put a strip or a tape light inside a profile with the end caps, with the diffuser on top, it is now a fixture. Right. More or less. Sure. And all you've done is taken strip light and added... Exactly. And it's just, it's, it's, it's safer for everyone. I mean, the strip lasts longer. It's protected. And, um, yeah, I... Not really much and to not add. Not really much to add to that, you know. Well, one of the, one of the things I do want to say to folks who might listen to this is... If you're thinking about, if your kid wants an RGB strip in their room, right? One, that's what, all, all the rage. All the rage, it's, yeah. It's like, you know, 35 to 40 bucks. Just remember that you can do a lot of different things with that without having it be just some junky piece of tape across your kid's wall. I mean, you're going to see in the, in, the, in the workbench, get a profile. Yeah, and, and it, it, the strip's going to last longer. It's going to last longer. It's not going to fall off. It's going to look cleaner. It's going to look nicer, you know. And it again, you know, you're talking about, do you really want to throw away 35 to 40 bucks? Exactly. Or, or do you maybe want to add five to 10 extra dollars to make it last? And that way your kid can use it for however long. Sure. So again, strip, lot of utility. 
can work in a lot of different areas, and it provides something uh, a lot of times very easy to install. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it it's it's easy to you know if you if you don't want to do it yourself, you can get an electrician. Uh, keep hitting my arm here, but you know you can always give it a shot yourself. So it's an easy do it yourself type. Sure. Type. Um, now, of course, if you want to do the whole maybe replacing your trim or adding to adding a level to your trim yeah, or get your a molding, yeah, we might want to get a professional. But in this case, uh, a lot of utility in strip. We're going to, sh- well, we have shown you guys that in the workbench. Take a look in the comments. You'll see that. Of course, in the workbench, there'll also be a link to this podcast where we talk a lot about the different things uh, that it can be used for. Again, Mr. Tarek Alamedine, thank you, sir, for joining us. Thank you. We And I'm sure we're going to come back to this topic because... Well, as we move forward and get more projects, we're going to talk a lot more about those individual projects, right. what went into it, what we did, and that kind of thing, uh, so that people can kind of get a look behind the screen, see a lot of what we do. And a lot of these projects, especially when we're participating in hotels, hotels seem to be getting very big into the strip market, um, at least overseas. Overseas, it's 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 dominant. There's no, you know, uh, it it's an integral part. Over here, it's just beginning to happen. Sure, we are at the cutting edge. We are at the cutting edge of technology. So yes. the uh, the light bleeding edge, if you will. So again, Mr. Tarek Alamedine, thank you, sir, for thank the you. explanation. Uh, hopefully, somebody with a hotel was watching this. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but we would shameless pitch. All right, hey, uh, you know we are giving this out for free, so it is my God-given right uh, to make a shameless pitch. But again, my name is McHugh David. Uh, we are together co-founders of Southern Lighting Solutions here in Denham Springs, Louisiana, bringing all sorts of stuff. We're currently working on a stadium. We're working on a school, yep. a gym. Uh, we're working on a bunch of f- baseball fields. Uh, we are staying busy. We cannot wait to talk to you guys about each individual project as we wrap them up, uh, but be looking for those in future podcasts as we sit down here in our new setup. So if you're watching the video, give us a little feedback. Otherwise, and if we have changed our setup next week, do not be surprised. Yes, we are, we are looking for uh, the right setup for you guys. Uh, now, of course, if you're listening, you don't care. Hopefully you feel like the sound is a little bit better We've changed up our seating arrangements, so we are a little closer to the mic, looking for a little more deep and rich sound. So again, McHugh David, Tarek Alimadine, signing off. We are talking about Strip. We will see you guys next time.